Atrial fibrillation, which is also known as AFib, is an arrhythmia, which is an irregular rhythm, and is in fact the most common arrhythmia that we see in cardiology today. It's an irregular rhythm that starts at the top of the heart and progresses towards the bottom of the heart that interrupts the synchrony of the heart. If one considers how the top and the bottom heart usually work together, where the top and the bottom are synchronized so that one goes before the other, this irregular rhythm throws off that synchrony to where they beat not in unison, they don't work together with each other. This actually causes the patient to feel palpitations, shortness of breath, and can even lead you to passing out. Atrial fibrillation is actually very unique when it comes to symptoms in that some people don't have any symptoms at all. In fact, most patients who have atrial fibrillation don't know that they have it and it's discovered accidentally while working up something else. Patients who are symptomatic with atrial fibrillation tend to experience shortness of breath, they feel palpitations, which is an irregular thumping of their heart and their chest. Uh, they may also experience dizziness and even to the extent of passing out. It is actually unclear in most patients as to what causes atrial fibrillation. Stressful situations such as illness or surgery, including pneumonia and other lung problems, has often been associated with atrial fibrillation. Risk factors for atrial fibrillation can include family history, as well as stressful situations such as surgery or illness. Electrolyte abnormalities, such as low potassium, has also led to atrial fibrillation in a lot of patients. Some patients who have also had strokes of unknown cause have been diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, which has been the cause of their stroke. Atrial fibrillation is diagnosed electrically, and electrical tests are the way in which we discover this. A typical electrocardiogram is performed in the hospital and if you are in atrial fibrillation at that time, we are able to see it. However, some patients go in and out of atrial fibrillation and longer tests are required such as a Holter monitor or an event monitor which can last anywhere from 24 hours up to 3 weeks to try to catch the arrhythmia. In some patients when atrial fibrillation occurs very infrequently, a longer type of study is required, such as an implantable loop recorder, which can last up to three years in which we can try to diagnose the arrhythmia. The treatment of atrial fibrillation is based mostly on how you feel. Some patients don't have many symptoms with atrial fibrillation and simply controlling your heart rate with medication is all that is required. However, some patients do feel short of breath, weak or dizzy with their atrial fibrillation and require medicines that not only control heart rate, but also try to control heart rhythm. Now, if you don't respond to those medications, we may have to consider doing a procedure known as a cardioversion, in which we give your heart an electrical shock while you're sleeping to reset your heart rhythm. Now, another procedure that may need to be considered if you don't respond to all of those above treatments is something called an ablation. Now, an ablation is a procedure in which we place catheters in the heart to try to electrically map your heart to find the location where your atrial fibrillation is coming from. Once we find that area, we're able to either burn or freeze that area to try to get rid of your atrial fibrillation. Well, the biggest risk associated with atrial fibrillation is actually that it can lead to stroke. If we think about how atrial fibrillation works again, where the heart no longer works in synchrony and sloshes around similar to a wash machine, when the blood sloshes, it actually causes blood clots to form. So one of the things we have to treat also with atrial fibrillation is the risk of stroke. And oftentimes your doctor may prescribe anticoagulation or blood thinner medicines to help prevent those strokes. Again, some patients are also symptomatic with atrial fibrillation and require medicine to control their heart rate or their rhythm.
Well, a general cardiologist can treat atrial fibrillation in terms of controlling the heart rate and the rhythm with medication. I associate the idea of a general cardiologist to a general contractor where we do plumbing and electrical work. However, certain patients who don't respond to medication need an electrician or a specialized cardiologist known as an electrophysiologist who can provide procedures such as an ablation to get rid of atrial fibrillation.